Welcome back to the bullpen. I'm your host, Chief. Episode nine now. And um, I will try to make this as quick as I can. Maybe I should have chunked it and done this as three or four different episodes. But um, I want to show you some skills again. And again, uh, like every time I introduce you to some new software or new skill, I want you to play. This is summer vacation, right? These tutorials are to help you have a leg up when you come back in the fall uh, so that you're ready to go to help create our yearbook for us, whether you're a staff member that's not in class or whether you're registered and you're going to be in class, this will make your learning a lot easier. Anybody else there out on the internet, if you are a newspaper student, a yearbook student, a public relations student, or a student publications advisor, uh, particularly middle school and high school, but who knows, maybe there's even some college people that could benefit from this too. Um, a lot of people, when they think about Photoshop, they ended up thinking about um, composite images, right? Photoshopped, meaning like a, it's a verb that you did or a, you know past tense verb, like you did something to a picture. You changed it. You altered it. Uh, I want to show you some really simple, might be mundane, might be boring, but often they're necessary uh, skills. These are just photo processing and editing skills, not the big stuff, the crazy, funky, surreal layers and making a new picture out of a bunch of other pictures. Uh, I'm talking about this is uh, some nitty gritty kind of stuff. So let's get to it. Here's some things. Come on, click, click. There we go. Here's some photo processing skills that I always got to use, get used to this left and right thing that you want to get used to. Uh, contrast levels, like for instance, this you know window behind me, so that I turn out looking all washed out and terrible, or there's that glare in your eyes that hurts your eyes, right? You know, so contrast levels, that's one thing. Uh, next thing is going to be red eye reduction. And I'm not going to show you these in any, any given order, I'm gonna, but I want to try and show you each of these. So that actually contrast and levels will be the second or third thing. So red eye reduction. So like um, not like if you're – really tired or have red eyes and haven't had enough coffee yet mm. um, but uh, healing and blurring and I don't mean that you deliberately want to make things look blurry um, I want to maybe smooth things out you'll see what I mean make things look better not worse uh, and um, this is not necessarily something you're going to take a, a load of time doing all the time, but if you're kind, you might once in a while if the picture is worth it. Uh, and some really old school, uh, which is uh, not where you take a terrible picture and um, make it possible uh, or take a good picture and make it better. It's really where you take – a picture that's kind of good but it could be a little better you just skosh just push it a little just a skosh just a little bit okay so these are some things that um ideally i can do this in 10 minutes <laughs> i'm so funny it might end up being 15 but um yeah so four things okay so let's go how do we go well, one thing is we get out of google slides and uh, you are gonna go this is online Photo P is a clone, basically, of Adobe Photoshop. Uh, it is um, out there. Uh, it's an app. You don't have to download it. I, I liked it so well that I downloaded it. You can use it from the web, right, just like Lucid Press, which the uh, last couple episodes I've introduced you to for doing layout, which is a lot like Adobe InDesign. Uh, you love this. It, it'll take Photoshop documents. My arrow, my cursor is not pointing like it. You would think. Um, there's a, anyway. You see down there on the bottom. You now raw off a camera. You could take a PDF and turn it into a JPEG or a ping. Uh, you can take things from Sketchpad. There's all kind. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. You saw right. That's Adobe Illustrator. That's like the god of graphic design tools. Okay, uh, King Kong, Godzilla. Anyway. So here's what we're going to do. You can go either to edit uh, file and open or on this uh, um, startup page, you can go to open from your computer. You're going to want to find your picture that you got. 
right? So maybe you took this with a phone and you sent it to yourself on your laptop, on your Chromebook. Maybe uh, PhotoP has got a, a, a phone-based version. I haven't looked for it. Uh, if they do, I hope it's free. It's probably kind of scaled down. Photoshop Express for your phone doesn't do near the junk that real Photoshop does. Um, but let's say you got a picture. And it's not in the greatest shape. And I have no idea who this person is. I found her on the internet. I probably shouldn't do that. Uh, but uh, I, I hope that I'm not humiliating her. And, uh, you know, uh, I'll take this video down if you see it and you're you're embarrassed and you want me to. Just say the word. But um, she doesn't have any zits necessarily, but she got some freckles. She's also a little bit uh, uh, overexposed. It's kind of washed out. So that gives me the opportunity to show you a number of different things that we can do. But the most glaring thing, obviously, right, is these eyes. Ay caramba. Ay caramba, those eyes. Right? Too much. Um, I'm going to hit minus and come back. Nope. Hit alt and come back. Hit alt and come back. There you go. Uh, that red eye that where the flash uh, hits on the eyes and goes back and reflects off the retina in the back. And so you look like bike reflector eyes. So let's say this is your student body president or your um, prom queen or homecoming uh, court. It's somebody that you need to have this picture of. And uh, they went on vacation, so you couldn't get another picture of them. And you, 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 you got to So, but this is all you've got. Well, you don't want to put that in the yearbook, right? So look over here on this tool side. Right, and there should be a tool. Um, make sure I'm finding it. Yeah, so uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, fifth one down. And if you press on it, you get a bunch of different choices spot healing brush tool, healing brush tool, patch tool, content move. You can learn about those some other time, but the red eye tool that's what you want is the red eye tool. You could come up here. And decide you want to make it a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. Right? Let me check over there. Oh, too big. Eh, probably about right-ish, about where I need it. Hard. I don't want a super hard edge, but I don't want super, something super soft either. Right? And um, once you get about what you've got, what you need, all you got to do is kapow. Right? Maybe I should zoom in so you can see the amazing, magical power of this tool. Right, Red eye reduction tool. Red eye tool. Just over their eyes. And I not just the red part, but I try and get the whole um, iris, the whole colorful part. And chapow. Okay. Which will bring us to the next step. Uh, which is maybe the, the burning and dodging kind of stuff, um, which will go further down. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. If I'm going too fast, stop and back up. That's the joy of YouTube. You can, you can do that. You can do that over and over again until you get it. Um, but this tool right here, uh, press and you got three. Sponge, burn, and dodge. Okay. Um, if I had been planning this and thinking uh, ahead of time better, I, I would have, uh, instead of grabbing something to try and pretend to show you, I, I would have like gotten a photograph of, of the thing. Back in the day, in old days, you would be in a um, dark room, right? And you have your print paper represented by this post-it note down here. And you'd have this big projector kind of a thing, which was called an enlarger. And you put the film in the enlarger. And it would project the image that you wanted through the negative onto the print paper. Okay? So you can enlarge it bigger or smaller, right? Because it's, what, an inch by two inches on what was called film negative film? Film negative, the factual film. Anyway, we have these couple of tools. One, as you see here, looks uh, it was like a spoon sort of a thing. And that was dodge tool. Watch what it can do. Okay. I want to take my highlights, not so much my mid-tones, and I want to brighten her eyes a little bit. Okay. 50% might even be too much. Maybe I could start at like 30%. Um, but um, watch. In fact, that's way too bright. I probably should do a Control-Z and undo that. 
Okay. Uh, maybe I want to go way down to 15, less than 30. And maybe I don't want to go over such a big area. So this would be a good time maybe to soften. I can change my size too, but soften the edges is probably the real important thing. Um, so now, right, I'm just a little brighter. Okay? And that'll go over parts of her eye and if there's a highlight in her eye, you know, a little more glint in her eye. Okay, uh, here's the next thing. So it was like putting uh, a spoon where this light is coming out. Uh, I would be putting a spoon in between it and the paper. So a uh, little area didn't get uh, as much burn, didn't get as much picture. That's a dodge tool. Now, the next uh, one, though, is a burn tool. And the burn tool is sort of the opposite of the dodge tool. Um, the more light that hit the paper, the darker that area on the paper got. So if you dodged it, I, like I got her eyes lighter. I was like preventing it from being burned, right? So um, talking everything is kind of kind of opposite speak, and it would make more sense if you had lived through that era and were in a real dark room. But now I have a little hand, right? And I suppose what they're doing is that if you're a photographer and you don't have the right tool, a good tool is kind of like a big spoon with a hole in it, but maybe you could use your hand. But you would put your hand or this piece of cardboard with a hole in it, like a viewfinder or a spoon with a hole in it, and you basically are covering most of the picture, uh, but you're letting light through in one area so that light is going to burn. Okay. And so this is what, um, again, I kind of like having it softer because if you make a mistake, it's not as glaringly obvious. But I'm going to make it maybe a little bit bigger. And, ooh, too big. And now it's too small. Too big. A little smaller. Okay. Anyway. I just want to go over, uh, and I'll darken the midtone. Sure, okay. a really good thing might be to darken the shadows. Oh yeah, here we go now. Okay, they don't look like you took them from red to gray. Okay, and if you really wanted to, um, now maybe you uh, come in and you do get it a little bit smaller, so the darks of her eyes are really wide open because she's scared or something or surprised. Actually, they're that way because of the uh, uh, flash. But uh, now if I were to go back to when I opened it, <laughs> see the difference? And, and maybe I do want to be somewhere in between. Right, from when I open it with that red eye to when I started darkening those pupils. Maybe I darkened them a little bit too much. Okay, uh, This, by the way, up here is a navigation tool. And if you don't doesn't show up, go to Window and choose Navigation Tool. This over here is History Tool. Again, if it doesn't show up, you want to choose History. Uh, not only can you control Z to undo something, but you can go from where you were to a few steps ago. Now, and obviously all the way to the beginning. Anywho. Okay, so let me show you another couple of tricks. Um, I should probably do the lighting and contrast and levels. Okay, these are probably easier than they kind of sound. We're going to go up here to image. And we're going to go to adjustments. Now, you can do an auto tone and see what that gets you. I don't see a whole lot of change. You can do an auto color, see what that gets you. A little warmer, I don't see a whole lot of change. You can do auto col uh, contrast, see what that gets you. You probably don't even hardly notice it. Okay? Uh, but again, you go back here to before and after. So I go up again to image and to adjustments. Uh, easy way to do this is go to brightness and contrast, and this picture is too dang bright, right? So 
I bring it down and it seems a little bit more normal, right? And I can do that too. Less contrast. No, now it's getting kind of muddy. More contrast. Yeah. Looks a little bit fake. And the freckles are really going crazy. Okay. Anytime you don't like how that works, hit reset. Okay. I'm going to X out of it. Show you more nuanced ways to do that. A little more complicated. Okay. Again, image, auto, <clears throat> Levels. Okay, levels gives you a thing called a histogram, and there's too much to teach about a histogram for me to give that to you in a couple of seconds here. But this is your middle gray. This is your darkest dark, sometimes called the black point, and this is your lightest light. Uh, we don't want it so light, right? Mm, so that's not going to do it. Uh, we don't need darker dark, right? Because if I pull my dark, see what happens. She's like hidden there's so much dark in there but what i might want to do is bring my grays down okay so just you know move it to the right and this looks a little bit more you now i get more detail in the white sweater there's only a little bit that is kind of um you know sort of bleached out that's not bad i, I could almost live with that i kind of like that but uh it's got a third way to show you and this each each of these different ways to do the same thing you know just get a little bit more complicated so you need more practice. So what a lot of people suggest in using a tool like Photoshop, or in this case, Photo P, is make your adjustments. Take this. Don't put it in the trash, but take it to this one that looks like a little Post-it note and uh, create a duplicate layer. And that's where maybe you want to make your adjustments, make your changes. So you still have your original. Uh, even if you totally go off the rails trying to fix. So anyway, here's the third one. It gets more complicated. It's called curves. And you notice there aren't any curves. Right? It shows you that histogram in the back. Right? And what you probably want to do is click on the middle where your gray is. And if you bow it up, it gets more and more white. Right? If you bow it down it gets more and more, right, a little darker, more color. A lot of times I was taught you should bring your blackest black in just a little, although in this case, yeah, see if I go up and it turns that black area gray. Uh, but it's also good maybe to bring your whitest white in just a little. Well, again, in this case, it's too white. So if I bring it down, I reduce my contrast. It gets almost kind of gray and muddy. I probably would need to do something. Now, you can be careful and get stuff just right. Uh, and the more practice you get, the better you get at it. Or you can be absolutely drastic and make things a total negative experience. finding aliens and giving her blue and green lips. And, you know, there's all kinds of extremes you can go to. Um, but I really recommend, you know, find what's right. Practice getting, you know, what what is, what is going to be the most professional. It's going to look the best in your book. Okay. Uh, one thing real quick for um, putting on a website you want 72 dots per inch. I'm going to show you this under image size. Okay. It looks like it's about five and a half inches wide. I'm going to leave it there. Change pixels to inches. So five and a half wide, six and a half. 72, you know, that's fine if it's just going to go on a web. For our yearbooks, uh, again, I you know, um, uh, LifeTouch or... Um, I don't remember any of the names besides uh, Herf Jones, which I used when I was in high school, uh, except we use Jostens. But I know there's a lot of them out there. But generally, they need 300 dots per inch. Okay, So what will probably happen if I really make this 300 DPI um, is I, – I should just show you, but I'm, I don't want to – take that time. I like 150. It's good for newspapers. But again, you you got to change things to 300 if you're going to get it in your yearbook. Um, might show you a little bit. Yeah, see? So it's larger. 
and you get a little more detail. Okay, one more use maybe for that dodging. So we'll go back and instead of burning, we want to dodge. And highlights will leave. Exposure at about 15 will leave. We can make this a little bit bigger. We'll get good soft edges. Okay. Uh, you know, some people, their smile is just a little in the shadows. That's how their mouth is made. I can't smile very good because I have a small, whatever, small arch instead of a large arch. Um, you may want to use this third tool. I'm not saying that she's drinking lots of coffee or smoking cigarettes, but you don't want those teeth to look quite so yellow. Use the sponge tool, and rather than saturate, go to desaturate. Again, 15, 20, 30, but not 100. Again, um, softer. Okay, I can be a little bit bigger. And watch what will happen now is I'm going to, yeah, teeth are a lot less yellow. Okay, I could even go back in and, and burn but just burn the shadows and do like 15%, something really, really low, you know, just so our teeth don't all kind of disappear. See how simple that is. Now, and um, I could do the similar thing, let's say for her eyes or maybe for her, her lips, probably I don't want to overdo it. I'll, I'll work on the eyes. Um, I don't want to desaturate. I want to saturate. I'm going to keep it low at like 25 again. But it looks to me like, you know, you can't tell that she has kind of greenish eyes. You know? And this, maybe I'm overdoing it, and you probably don't want to do it. You usually don't want to over, because see how they're kind of looking rainbow? And, and that little, you know, so I probably maybe undo the eye part. It was okay on the teeth, but hey, so that's a sponge tool for saturating or desaturating. And, um, oh yeah. Okay. So, um, this total stranger to me, no idea who she is. And I, I apologize that we're kind of making fun of her. I'm not making fun of her. Um, but, uh, it, she's lucky. She doesn't have any blemishes. No, I'm not seeing zits. I am seeing freckles. Um, so I'm going to use those as if they were zits, okay? I'm going to go here, Spot Healing Brush Tool. Notice it's a real small spot. Is that? No, that one's on my screen, so you didn't even see it. Uh, let's go down this one on her chin because you can kind of make it out. Watch and be amazed. Woo. Now, now my computer freezes. There, it's gone. It's gone. But there, Whew, it's gone. It's like magic. This one, her nose, gone, gone. So if they were zits, you know, we're really helping her out. We're getting rid of these zits. Okay, uh, one more. Usually, nope, not the eraser tool. Mm, oh, there, it's right here. Uh, I like to use a blur tool. Smudge tool can get a little bit weird and messy, but a blur tool. Okay? Uh, some of this is uh, because I had a low resolution. It was only 72 resolution picture, right? And I'm looking at it at 175. So if it's getting kind of grainy or a bit mappy, it's because I'm looking at it too close. Uh, but I take my blur tool and I want a bigger area, maybe too big, and soft and not hard. Say you're like me, or see how, no, I'm not going to do that. You know, at 5 o'clock shadow because I didn't shave this morning because we don't have students every day. Um, bad pores, I'm just really bad. Anyway, uh, let's say that she doesn't want to have freckles, okay? Well, we take this blur tool, and you can kind of even watch it happen as I'm doing it. Again, you want to be careful when, where, and how much you do it. Because the, the trick here really is to make it nuanced, make it look like she's wearing makeup, you know, uh, or but not make it obvious that something happened in the computer. You know, you didn't do this. 
Okay, a little shine on her head. So smooth it over. Okay, and again, the key is not to be obvious. You're not doing a composite or something surrealism. You're photo processing. This does bring up all kinds of questions, okay, in terms of ethics and uh, what a portrait studio that you pay for, they want you to make them look better, or a yearbook or a school newspaper that is simply supposed to just report, right? You happen to be there at the awards banquet and you took a picture and that's what you use. I don't think those are as big of um, ethical dilemmas as the deep fake where you've got, uh, I, I don't know if it started with Snapchat, uh, but the technology that you can wrap someone else's face over um, your actor or model's body or, and you know, pretend to be a celebrity saying something that they didn't, or a politician misrepresenting the views of their party because you're a member of the opposite party. I don't think that this is that level of ethical dilemma, but if you got a chapter that deals with student press law or responsibility and ethics, you may want to talk about, you know, uh, maybe uh, there was somebody in the background behind her and you want to just focus on her. And so you take them out. It's possible. So is that right? You're altering reality. You now, these are things that you and your staff should talk about, but I just wanted to have you to, to quickly show you some of the, the editing kind of things, photo processing kind of things, not big time surrealist art kind of things or um, monkeying with the truth for the sake of disinformation kind of things that a program like Photo P or Photoshop can do. Uh, last thing I always try and show, like show my kids, um, Save it as a Photoshop document if you need to go back in and make more changes or export. And you probably don't need a GIF. Uh, this kind of thing is not um, a vector graphic. You know, JPEG is the old-fashioned kind of thing for newspapers. But I think yearbooks and newspapers both could probably start using paying portable network graphic because they um, – just higher quality than, than JPEGs were. Hey, uh, that's all I have to say about that. And it should be downloaded. And uh, now I can even put the two of them together and compare. Should I do that? I, I can. Um, how fast can I do it? Because I don't want to waste your time. Oh, well. Yeah, I'm going to say goodbye. And I'll tell you what, I'll put the before and after pictures on our blog post on the bullpen, uh, which is bvyrbk.wordpress.com. Uh, and then look for uh, bullpen if you really want to see the before and after. Otherwise, just you know, do the thing because uh, it's YouTube. Back it up. Rewind it. You can see the before picture. Right? I'm done. Have a great summer. See you next time. If there is a next time. <laughs> <laughs>